Within galaxies are clouds of gas called nebulae. These are the birthplace of stars. That's right, stars are born from the dust and gas within these clouds. Stars actually have a life cycle. They are born, evolve and change over a period of time, and then die. The birth of a star begins as gravity pulls hydrogen gas in the nebula into a spinning cloud. As more and more atoms of hydrogen are brought into the cloud, they begin to strike each other, creating greater and greater amounts of heat. When the temperature reaches 20 million degrees Fahrenheit, a nuclear reaction begins. Atoms of hydrogen are fused or joined to form helium atoms. A great deal of energy is released as this happens. The energy is given off in all directions in the forms of heat and light. The star is born. Nuclear fusion is what keeps a star evolving. The sun is relatively young. It has been fusing millions of tons of hydrogen into helium every second for the past 5 billion years and will continue for another 5 billion. This fusion happens deep in the core of the star, where temperatures and pressure are unbelievable. Eventually, the sun's supply of hydrogen will be nearly used up. The core, which is made up of helium, will begin to shrink. As the core shrinks, its temperature will build up and the helium atoms will fuse, forming carbon atoms. At this point, the sun's hydrogen outer shell will expand outward to an enormous size, extending to the orbit of the Earth. The star will then be considered a red giant. Then, the sun will blow away its outer atmosphere and begin collapsing into a form called a white dwarf. During this process, the star will shrink to planet size as more and more helium is fused into carbon. White dwarfs are extremely dense and give off a cool white light. A spoonful of matter from a white dwarf would weigh many tons. The sun will continue to give off some energy until all its fuel is gone, and then it will become a dead star. How long a star takes to evolve is determined by its starting mass. The more massive a star is, the shorter its life. Our sun is an average-sized star, so it will take about 10 billion years from birth to death. A smaller star might take 100 billion years, while a larger star may shine for only a few billion years. A more massive star goes through a different death. When a star that is many times larger than our sun turns into a red giant or a supergiant, it doesn't evolve into a white dwarf. Instead, because of its terrific gravity, it fuses carbon atoms into heavier elements. In other words, the star continues to carry on fusion and produces heavier and heavier elements. Eventually, the core of the star has converted mainly to iron atoms, and it stops the fusion process. Then the star explodes in a violent explosion called a supernova. The light of a supernova could be brighter than a million suns. The temperature of a supernova can exceed 100 billion degrees Celsius, which is greater than 180 billion degrees Fahrenheit. This is hot enough to fuse the iron atoms to make even heavier elements. The elements, gases, and dust of the star explode into space, forming a new nebula. This nebula could become the birthplace for a whole new group of stars. Our solar system is made up of the remains of a supernova that exploded billions of years ago. So everything found within our solar system, the sun, planets, moons, asteroids, and everything found on our planet, is made of the stuff of stars. People are made of stardust. Scientists call us a second generation solar system. Elements, which are the building blocks of all matter in the universe, are formed in the cores of stars during nuclear fusion reactions. The core of a star that has exploded in a supernova can end up as either a neutron star or a black hole, depending on its original mass. Stars that are 6 to 30 times more massive than the sun would turn into a neutron star after the supernova. A spoonful of matter from a neutron star would weigh 100 million tons. These stars spin very fast. Sometimes a neutron star gives off radio waves as it spins. These are called pulsars. 
If the star was originally 30 or more times larger than our sun, the fate of the core is very strange indeed. After the supernova explosion, the core is so heavy and the gravity so strong that the star pulls in on itself to form what is called a black hole. A black hole has such strong gravity that everything that comes near is swallowed by it. Nothing can escape the black hole, not even light. How can astronomers see something that doesn't even let light escape from it? An explanation is that most stars in the universe are actually double or triple star systems. That means that in a double star system, two stars rotate around each other. So, gases from a companion star are pulled into the black hole. As that happens, the gases heat up and give off X-rays. Astronomers use equipment to detect X-rays in order to find black holes. Black holes are very mysterious. We do not know what happens to objects that are drawn into them. Some theories indicate that as objects are pulled into a black hole, they elongate and are torn apart. Some ideas suggest that black holes may be passageways that lead to other parts of the universe, or even to other universes. Astronomers call these theoretical passages wormholes. Because of the connection between time and space, they believe it might be possible to travel back into time through these wormholes.